So suppose we want to perform the tumor classification and we plot the data on a 2D graph where the data is classified into two categories. The blue category is the benign tumor category and the red category is the malignant tumor category. And the data belonging to both the categories is basically in the form of clusters. So we have basically two clusters and there is a, a variance of the cluster or basically it is basically the representative of the size of that cluster. And we can clearly see that there is a significant difference between the two clusters. Okay. So now LDA focuses on finding the unit vector of the decision boundary such that two criteria should be satisfied. Okay, guys. First criteria should be that the variance of the projected data points should be reduced. Okay. And the distance between the projected data of the individual clusters increases. Okay. So let's make the unit vector and obviously here we are going to take some random unit vector just as an example to give you a visual effect of the concept. Now when we start projecting the data points onto this unit vector. Okay. So these are the projected data points of the benign category and these are the projected data points of the malignant category. And here you can see that we have two clusters and you can clearly see that the updated variance of the projected data points is coming out to be little bit less in comparison to the variance of the data points which were not projected. So this width or this width is less than this width, right? In fact, the difference between the projected data points is also increased. It means the two criteria are getting satisfied. So this difference is less, whereas this difference is more, right? So now let's try to visualize that how LDA projects different kind of data in different scenarios. So we have here three scenarios. So let's see the first scenario that where LDA projects this data. So LDA will definitely choose the above unit vector to project, to project the data because the two criteria are getting satisfied. In the second scenario, you can clearly see that where the LDA is going to project the data points, it will project to the side because obviously the two criteria are getting satisfied. But the third case is pretty interesting. Okay. Because in this case, if we try to project the data points onto a unit vector, we get quite a good amount of misclassification. Okay. So in this case, LDA is not a good option. So what should we do? Well, we apply QDA. We create quadratic decision boundary. And here, as you can see, the data points are getting classified very well. But the question arises is how? Because it doesn't look like, right? So for that, we have to understand the basic idea behind QDA. So what QDA does is it increases the dimension so that we can classify benign and malignant tumors easily. Let's see that how it's happening because it's very hard to visualize in 2D. So for that, we have to jump to 3D because the QDA increases the dimensions. So from 2D to we have to jump to 3D. Okay. So let's see with the help of a visualization that how QDA is letting us perform perfect classification. So these are our benign data points, which you have seen just now. And these are our malignant data points. Now let's see what QDA does. So we are in a 3D space, right? And the decision boundary, which was looking like a convex curve to you, that was a quadratic decision boundary. That will basically look like a plane in 3D. And that plane can easily penetrate through the data points. So that's the whole idea behind QDA.